Good afternoon, dear brethren, sisters, Church of God, just the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Before we begin this video, I have some prayer requests that need to be made public. Um, number one, uh, please keep our brother Jeff Jones in prayer. Um, we've talked about him before. Um, please keep him in prayer that our Lord continually, and he will, but our Lord continually be there to provide for him as he needs. Um, thermodynamics is happening with our dear brother Jeff Jones and um, the second wall. As with us all. As with us all. Okay? So please keep Brother Jeff Jones in your prayers. Also, there is a sister out there whose father um, had to be rush, rushed to the emergency room uh, with blood clots in the lungs. Never a good thing. Uh, please keep her in prayer for that as well. And also, too, um, we had a little scare here before just not even a half an hour ago with my wife. Um, she fell. Um, we believe it's because of her shoes, but it was, uh, oh, it was a horrific sight. So uh, please keep my wife in your prayers as well. Okay? Please. Please. Thank you. Hmm. You know, I'm a people watcher. Like when I go to Chicago, um, or even walking around town, you know, I, I, I observe people. It's something, you know, I, I enjoy doing, just looking at the people, watching them go by, and, um, you know, you can, there is some credence to the, you can tell a lot about a person by how, the, by, by how they walk, uh, in both ways, in the physical and the spiritual. Uh, now, you got to remember, as far as a walk, physical walk is concerned, some people can put on, I've seen it, uh, some people will walk a certain way to you know, their chest out, to, to make themselves look uh, imposing. Uh, there was a, a hermetic individual who, um, you know, covered in tattoos and whatnot, and he had this kind of a lumbering, swaggering walk trying to give off this um, thing that he was a you know, tough guy or something like that. And, um, but anyway, you can, you can tell. There are some distinguishing features of the person, spirit, soul, and body, of how they walk. Like I said, it can be faked. Like I've, like I've said to you and told you, the conditioning of a man, mankind, spirit, soul, and body, is in their eyes, you know? That's why I think a lot of these devils aren't showing their faces anymore, because it's so late in the hour that the redemption of the purchase possession could happen at any moment. And, I mean, especially sweetheart in uh, Canada there, um, you know, not showing his face anymore. Uh, these people are lying bold-facedly to you, okay? And they do a lot of this. And the guy from England, by the way, with the bald head, uh, he was doing that one video that I was sent, and I watched that. He was doing this. Doing this. That, that's telling. That is telling. That is telling. And when I, the, the other day when I was watching, you know, and by the way, you know, this, this, you know, video is actually the smaller part of what it means to be in the Ministry of Reconciliation. It, this is actually the smaller part. This is glorious for the Lord and the, the uh, you know, that his word gets out there. Amen, amen. Nothing on me. I mean, brr, obviously, like I tell you all the time, I make mistakes. <laughs> the last video that I uploaded yesterday, you know, correcting a blunder that was my fault. Okay? 
there, there are some people out there apparently who will put on this facade of humility, but yet, well, yeah, I messed up, but these guys did this, this guy did that, this guy did this, 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 this. Yeah, I did. It's veiled Adamic. Like the video, like the mess up I did in the marriage video, uh, which was addressed yesterday. Okay, that that's my fault. <laughs> I messed up. No one to blame but me. How many people that you know that put on this thing of you know? Oh, I'm humble. I'll I'll admit my errors. Yeah, but there's always a, another to coincide with that, you know, humility. But watch out for that. Watch out for that. But as I was watching, you know, as I've watched that uh, hermetic individual, um, it came into my head. It's like, wow, what a horrific thing for you to have to uphold a reputation. But yet, reputation is something of prominence also with the Lord. Why? Because if it is based upon Him. Get your authorized version. Read along with me. Hey! Read along with me because, because guess what? I make mistakes. I'm just a man. Spirit, soul, and body just like all of you are. What's different? Number one, I'm saved. Okay? I'm saved. Number two, the Lord has allotted your servant time. Time to be here. Time to be with Him. Okay? Even other brethren have pointed this out. It's like, you know, Brad, the Lord gave you time. I know that. <laughs> oh, and incidentally, beloved, Part one and part two have come. Okay? Okay? We'll, we'll talk later. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and please read along with me. The Iberian. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Okay? Yes, we are going to be addressing walk. A walk with the Lord. Your walk with the Lord physical but also spiritual because a lot of these guys a lot of these Christians you know they they can walk this walk but they can't walk their talk all the time except in the opposite way we'll explain more as we go Proverbs 9 verses 1 on verse 6 wisdom hath builded her house she hath hewed out her seven pillars, seven, seven dispensations, okay? Seven spirits of God, or I, I believe that's what that is. Uh, seven spirits of God, yes. Yes, that doesn't mean that there are eight fathers, or seven fathers out there, no, okay? Wisdom, again, wisdom is given unto us scripturally uh, in comparison to the beauty of a woman. And remember, the woman is the glory of the man. Okay? So it is described to us in this fashion so that we can hinge it. And also, in Proverbs 7, you have an example. Now, wisdom, the word is not used in, um, at least not offhand that I can remember. Um, yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Excuse me. See? See? In uh, uh, Proverbs 7, verse 4, say unto wisdom, the fear of the Lord, Thou art my sister, and call understanding, departing from the evil, thy kinswoman. And then you are given the example of the harlot, who comes looking the part, smelling the part, senses, visual stimuli. She even sounds the part, you know. Therefore, verse 15, Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. Smooth sweet words. But ultimately, verse 27 in Proverbs 7, her house is the way to hell. 
going down to the chambers of death. Oh, look the part. Smell the part. He even sounded the part. But her house, you know, the church buildings, is the way to hell. Going down to the chambers of death. Hmm. And then in Proverbs 8, verse, the very first verse, Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? The fear of the Lord and departing from evil. Her. Her. Okay? Her. It's written that way for a reason. Because we are to cherish the fear of the Lord as if you, you know, you, you see a fine looking woman. A fine looking sister. Okay? And your eyes, and you you look at that, it's like, wow, man. Especially a woman that fears the Lord. <laughs> huh. Huh. Uh, there's a lot of women out there who look the part, but a woman that fears the Lord, man, that's a treasure. You, sister, are a treasure. You fear the Lord. I know of a few of you. Okay? So, wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She has sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Her maidens. Now look at that language. You see wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and you also see wine and her table. Okay? Sent forth her maidens. Okay? What's the counter to that? Rome, the daughters of the whore, drinking the wine of the wrath of her, uh, drinking the wine of her fornication and engulfing the <laughs> bale cookie. Self. 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 Okay? Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for, as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, You don't want to be part of this? Come. Let us reason together, you and I. I think it's time you wake up out of your sleep. Come. Eat of my bread. The bread of life, our Lord Jesus Christ. And drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, behaving, thinking, acting, as if you say in your heart, there is no God. <laughs> Slap yourself, brother, sister. Come on. All right? Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding, departing from evil. Proverbs 22, one verse. Proverbs 22, one verse. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Good name. And also you see in Ecclesiastes 7, verse 1. A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death than the day of one's uh, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Hmm. Hmm. A good name. A good name. Now obviously a good name is a twofold thing. How are you known amongst the heathen? Hmm? Now, that doesn't mean that we go out of our way to, you know, whatever, but see as ambassadors for Christ. How we serve our God reflects Him. Hence, look at Christianity. Look at the sinless perfectionists. They, they think they're God. Look at the free gracers. They think they're God because they save themselves by their own belief. Look at the Catholic from whence all this filth comes from. Hmm? Self-righteous. I've been confirmed. I ate the cookie. I had the wine. 
I can go to my I can go to my priest and get resolved and go on my merry way. But see, what is good? What is good? See, the basis of goodness, see, in us, that is, ourselves, in our flesh, there dwelleth no good thing. If there's anything good in a saint, this is, you know, obvious, it's the Lord, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, that true goodness can't be faked. They can, they can do it for a while, but, dude, sooner or later... They always shoot themselves in the foot. Job 28. Job 28. Job 28. Verses 12 under 20. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Amen. Oh, amen. See, the religious fear offered by Christianity is taught by the precepts of men. Not from these people who are a new creature. Okay? Okay? Man, and instinctively, man, we, we don't know the, the wealth, the price, the, the joy of the fear of the Lord until it's instilled in you. Until you are on that sinking submarine and you see that water coming up. Hey, dude, you know, there's got to come a time in your life when you stop pointing the finger and start looking here. Okay? I've seen a lot of that lately. I've seen a lot of that lately. People are it's just like Adam. You know, the woman thou gavest me to be was she gave me of the tree and I did eat. The old man, which is resident here in the, in the flesh. A saint eventually overcomes that. Because a saint will eventually, we would, sir, we will try, but a saint eventually will yield. Because, you know, what else is there to do? Okay? Verse 14. The depth saith, it is not in me. And the sea saith, it is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above ruby. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? Now, look at those verses from verses 15 on to verse 19. Do you notice there? Gold, silver, gold, sapphire, onyx, Crystal, coral, pearls, topaz. You think of what I'm thinking, brother? Huh? You think of what I'm, th you think of what I'm thinking, ain't you? Yeah, muddled streams we call Brother Alexander and I call that muddled streams. <laughs> Why? Because we have the same father. And Brother Alexander B. Hartley and I are <laughs> very, very much alike. <laughs> we, we, we really are. We really are. Like that little putz. Jake, you know, these guys are like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, you little jerk. Sandwiched between the bread of life. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. Verse 13. Hmm. 
Thou hast been in, in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the, saf the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, mm. and gold. Ooh. The workmanships of thy tabrets and of thy pipes ah, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. <laughs> Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And as I told someone just before this video, um, in counseling, um, you know, the devil show you the world in a moment of time and offer you all these things. And all you got to do is bow down and worship him and all will be thine. And see the fear of the Lord. But the devil offers you. <laughs> the, uh, uh, Job 28, 17. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. <laughs> Verse 18. No mention shall be made of coral or, or of pearls. <laughs> Verse 19, the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? Of course we're going to read it. Verse 28, and on the man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. But what is evil? You got the antinomianist twits who um, exude, hey, the more evil you do, the more grace you got. So the more evil you do, the better it is for you. Yeah. Yeah. The sinless perfectionist. The third. You know. But see, sinless perfectionists are all about pride themselves. Flesh. Same with the antinomianists. Why? Because they have the same mother. Yeah. 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 Second Timothy four. Second Timothy four. Second Timothy four. Second Timothy four verses seven and eight. And as far as, you know, as we read uh, about crown, you know, jewels, okay? See, Satan offers you all the jewels of the world, all the glory of the world in a moment of time. If you fall down and worship him, all will be thine. But the fear of the Lord is beyond rubies. It can't be compared with anything that Satan's off offering to you. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Not that he saved himself by continuing believing. No, he has kept it as being an example unto it. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. A crown of righteousness from the Lord himself. And not, on, not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And also, Psalm 119. I, I was in Psalm 119 today, and uh, some of you will know that. Um, yeah, that, that's, my, that's my favorite psalm, okay? In the book of Psalms. Uh, it is my favorite psalm. Uh, Teth. Uh, Psalm 119, Teth. Psalm 119, Teth. Oh, you don't know the verses? I shouldn't tell you. But I will. 65 on to 72. Again, brother, sister. You see that? Teth, where it says that? Learn to identify Psalm 119. By that, and I don't know what that means. By the way, one of the brethren asked me today. It's like, well, what does shin mean? And we're going to read shin today. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> but when it comes to the heading there, I, I really believe that 
the word teth is defined by itself within the context of the eight verses. Because every one of these paragraphs, count them, go ahead, count them. Okay, they're all eight verses. Okay. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have been, for I have believed thy commandments. See, a lot of people read it, but they don't believe it. They believe that it's actual fact, but it doesn't go from here to here. Okay? Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Good. There's that thing good. And there is none good but who? God. So a good name? See, saints are to have a rep reputation in the Lord. Okay? People, you know, if I ain't doing this, I'm out there, just so you know. Okay? Um, <laughs> the people around here, that's why it's going to be great to get back to Missouri. Uh, then, uh, we, you know, I'm bringing like a whole bunch of tracks down there too. And we're, we're going to use that time because people don't know me over there. I'm, people are aware of me around here. And um, I get avoided. Um, and people, you know, <laughs> I do, I get avoided. Okay, uh, and you can go off on that however you want to, you devil. Okay, but uh, people are aware of me. Okay, people know if they, they ask me or talk to me um, sooner or later. My, I, I, because I love my father. And I love what my father wrote. So, you know, from the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world. Okay, we are of God. Whoso is of God heareth us. Okay? All right? All right? Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. And that's what they do. Their smear campaigns and whatnot. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. Yeah, puffed up. They trust in their own heart. The sinless perfection, guys. Those guys are idiots. Okay, most people, unless a novice or someone who is clinging to their pride, and then in their pride, well, I don't sin anymore. Okay. Antinomianists, free gracers. I say, because I just believe. Okay? It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Who teaches like the Lord, huh? And you know what? The, one of the best ways to teach is that any saint will tell you, pain! <laughs> pain is a way to teach. And with us, man, us, man, in this sagging sin suit, yes, the law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Reputation. Reputation. Ecclesiastes 10. Uh, 10. This is tomorrow's reading. Ecclesiastes 10. Reputation appears five times in the scripture. What is five associated with? Death. Remember in Isaiah 14, 12 under 15, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Tony Robbins, success is doing what you want, when you want, where you want, with who you want, as much as you want. I mean, anyone, I mean, only blind people, blinded hearts, couldn't tell that that guy's a Satanist. Okay, and I tell that to his seven foot five frame so he can club me on the head and my wife would get the royalties. <laughs> okay, but Ecclesiastes 10, verses 1 on verse 3. I've heard this like, you know, well, Christians are going to be dead to their reputation. To their reputation, absolutely. But we are ambassadors for Christ. And see, Christianity, dude, again, yes, Christianity is evil. Christian, you heard me right. 
Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay? You are to abandon that. I think you ought to abandon something Christ never referred to us as. Okay? And besides, and besides, what is the name of the Lord? Jesus. Which one? Jesus Christ. There are many Jesuses out there. And Christian, anointed one, if you, okay, well, we're called by the name of the Lord, and you call yourself Christian, what's the name of Christ? How come? Serious question. <laughs> Why, where, where is Jesus Ian? <laughs> or Jesus I, or whatever. Okay, that would have a little bit more credence at least. That's nowhere in Scripture. But you, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Okay? Dead flies. Dead flies. Flies. Who vomit all the time. Come around when corpses are there. Dead bodies. Dead in trespasses and sin. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. <laughs> A stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom, fear of the Lord, and honor. And look who's saying this. King Solomon, who had men, who loved many strange women, had 700 wives and 300 concubines. But, see, he was aware. He was aware. He was aware. Yea, also, right here, excuse me, verse 2, a wise man's heart is at his right hand, synonymous with the right hand of the Lord, okay? But a fool's heart is at his left. Hey, South Paul, that doesn't mean that we are left-handed, you're cursed. No, that doesn't, no, okay? The right hand of God, the, God, uh, the right hand of, of God, at the right hand of God, Sign of authority. The left hand path you've heard of. Okay, you get it? Okay, that's not a cut to you people who are southpaws. Left handed, okay? Verse 3. And see, again, right hand, synonymous with the right hand of the Lord. The left hand path, yea, as God said, ye shall be as God. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. Flesh. Check this out. Yea, also when he that is a fool who says in his heart there is no God, except themselves, <laughs> sinless perfectionist, the antinomianist, the Calvinist, the Catholic, which all of those are daughters of, the German Catholic, shall we continue? Uh, the Muslim, okay, the Hindu. The Buddhist especially. The Buddhist is like plain as day. Okay, those of you, you Christians, I, I see why a lot of you are drawn to them. Besides, the story of Buddha itself is very amusing. <laughs> Any of you know what that means? Yeah. Uh, it's very amusing. It's very it's entertainment. I used to have the book. Um, but yeah, Buddhism is kind of like, you know, Ray Charles could see that one. Okay, but, yea, also when he that is a fool walketh by the way. So when you got someone who is their own God, who saves themselves by their own belief, or even stupider than that, and that is, that they don't sin anymore. That they are a little God. Um, when they try to walk by the way, okay, the way, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh out of the Father but by him. They could do it for a while. Remember the uh, the magicians in Egypt? They could do, what was it? The, uh, they did the thing, the serpents. They did the blood. They, cast, they did frogs or something like that. But when it came to making dust into lice, they couldn't do that one. Okay? Yea, also when he that is a fool walketh by the way, 
His wisdom faileth him. Yeah, why? Because his wisdom, a fool, is earthly, sensual, devilish. And he saith to everyone that he is a fool. And, and you know, we, this, was, this isn't in notes, but you, you got to go here. You got to go here. 1 John 2, 19, they went out from us. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that, that they were not all of us. That's the falling away. Okay? That's a very good definition of the falling away scripture. Okay? So, reputation for wisdom, fear of the Lord, and honor. Hmm. Okay? Acts 5. Acts 5. Acts 5. Gamaliel, or Gamaliel, or however you want to pronounce it. Oh, we'll find out. Acts 5, verses 29 on 40. Right here, okay. No, that's the wrong one. 8 will not do. Okay. A, uh, Acts 5, 29 on 40. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. And they did that by handing Jesus over to Rome. Him hath God exalted with his right hand. Okay? Okay, you get that tie-in with the Ecclesiastes? Okay? To be a prince and a savior with seven letters. Don't miss that one. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart. And took counsel to slay them. Just like in Acts 7 there, when Stephen finally let you, stiff-necked and uncircumcised and ear, heart and ears, okay? What they did, they were cut to the heart and they wanted to kill him. See, pricked the heart, a little blood comes out like in Acts 2. They were pricked in their heart and they're like, oh, what should I do? Okay? Here, again, they were cut to the heart. And when someone's cut to the heart they bleed yes but their immediate reaction is have we not said well that thou art a devil then stood there up one in the council a Pharisee named Gamaliel Gamaliel a doctor of the law now we're not going to debate this because we'll find out when we get there. There is truly no real scriptural evidence that suggests Gamaliel was a safe man. Do I personally think so? I, that doesn't matter. Do I personally think so? No. No, I don't. But see, Gamaliel has something that most lost people and virtually virtually all Christians don't. He had a little common sense. Had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. And remember, it was Gamaliel whom Paul learned from. Okay? And he said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, all like these preachers that come and go, boasting themselves to be somebody, uh, like that, that idiot uh, that open air preacher, you know, oh, I don't sin anymore. Take your pick at the free gracer, okay? To whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves. 
who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. That's nothing. Okay? After this man, the only reference to anything that is in the Apocrypha, it's a, it was an actual event. The Maccabean Revolt was an actual historical event. Even scripture gives credence to that. Uh, the book of Maccabees, <laughs> all four of them actually, are not inspired scripture. Uh, the one dude, uh, and they call it a title, uh, anti, uh, and uh, whatever his name was, dies like three or four times. And people say, well, that's just a title. No, 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 it isn't. No, the Apocrypha is not scripture. But the Maccabean Revolt really happened. That, that's historical. I mean, yes. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing. There's your only scriptural reference onto the Maccabean Revolt. That really did happen, okay? And drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now, excuse me, I say unto you, refrain from these men. Let them alone. Let them alone. Let them alone. For if this counsel or if this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found to even fight against God. See, right there, verses uh, 38 and 39, kind of shows you, I don't think Gamaliel believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. If, if he really believed, I, I believe he would have been like, look, this is, this is of God. Look what's happening, you know. But he didn't. Now, then again, you could make the argument, well, Gamaliel, he was, you know, trying to cover his backside, which I would agree with, okay. But ultimately, I don't think Gamaliel was ever one of us. Hey, if he's up there, and he's up there, I, hey, hey, Lord, it's like with uh, Ruckman and whatnot and several others. Hey, if I'm wrong and they're up there, whoop, great. Praise the Lord. Give me that pie. Give me that crow. Come on. Let me get my bed. No, I won't keep, give it. Hey, I don't have to worry about this big old belly up there in heaven. So give me all you want me to eat. Lord, I'll eat it. I don't care. Okay. I don't think Gamaliel was a saint. But that's here nor there. What he said, that, though, this counsel or work be of men, it'll come to naught. But he was not. But he was held in reputation because that's common sense right there. These guys cut to the heart. They wanted to kill him. Whoa, 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 dude. Okay. Whoa, dude. Okay. Whoa, dude. Okay. Leave him alone. Okay. If this isn't of God, they're going to... Like with these devils. Sooner or later, they shoot themselves in the foot all the time. Then they're eventually going to come to naught. Okay. We saints, we get taken home. That's how we get out of the way. Okay. <laughs> all right. Or we die or whatever. Okay, they, they enfold in on themselves eventually. Uh, they will be known. And see, that's another reason why these guys really don't like you to have memories and to bring up things of the past, even though that's what they like to do. Like that jerk from England. He, he you know, always trying to keep people hidden, uh, like uh, marked in the past and bring up things that people used to do. But the minute you like, have the evidence to uh, prove that one isn't saved, the minute you bring that up, doxing, doxing, and they go to Mother Rome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, see, Gamaliel had enough sense. He was held in reputation for, okay? And look at that. Among the people. He was a doctor of the law, had in reputation among the people. And in Ecclesiastes, it was, it was reputation in wisdom and honor. Mm. Galatians. Galatians 1 and 2. Galatians 2, excuse me. 1 and 2. Excuse me. Galatians 2, 1 and 2. 
Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Reputation, talking about, you know, the, uh, the uh, where he said he went on uh, and communicated unto them that gospel that I, which I preached among the uh, Gentiles, but print privately to them which were of reputation like the apostles, some of the disciples, some of the bishops and stuff like that, okay? In reputation, okay? Again, context, and you go on to read, context would be with those who are of the Lord, okay? Their reputation in the Lord, okay? See, you and I are examples, ambassadors for Christ. So how we serve, and you know what? The measure of how you serve Christ is reflected of the person who you actually are when it's the four walls, ceiling, and floor. See, y'all can hide that pretty good. But sooner or later, who you are when it's the four walls, ceiling, and floor, that's who you really are. That's who comes out eventually. My words, saints. My words. Okay? And now Philippians. Go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 5 on verse 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. But Jesus had a reputation. But see, the point is, Jesus came here to serve, not to be served. When you go around claiming that you don't sin anymore, wow, look at you. When you come around, I'm saved just because I believe. And I have a license to do whatever. And the more evil I do, the better it is for me because I get more of God's grace. I, 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 I. Okay? Okay? But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the, the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. You have heretics, I'm sure that idiot Scott would fall into this. It's like, well, you have the mind of Christ, therefore the mind you have isn't your own either. But to my knowledge, I, I would have been informed by one of the brethren at least that that guy hadn't come out with something. That, that would be, uh, you, you know, that dude, that idiot tells you that your faith isn't your faith, but it's the faith of Jesus. <laughs> it's not funny. It's just so stupid, okay? It's so stupid. It, it really is. It really is, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but, I mean, there are those out there who, uh, that's not funny, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I pity that man. I do. I pity that man. Anyway, there are people out there, well, you got the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ was the mind of a servant. If you had the mind of Christ, you'd know all things. You wouldn't think those wicked thoughts, would you? Would you? Okay? And then, hey, that would bleed into you being sinlessly perfect. You'd be a God. Hmm. No, the mind of Christ is a mind of a servant. Christ had every right to be served. But he came to give his life a ransom for many. He came to serve, not to be served. God the Father. And washing the stinking feet of the disciples. You ever wear leather sandals all day? And then get them dirty? Woo! Anyway, anyway, that's a little crude, excuse me. Verse 8, 
but being found in fashion as a man. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Seven again. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The cross. <laughs> okay? The death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Obedient. That's what, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, came to do, to destroy the works of the devil. Through charity. Through charity, which is self-sacrifice. Okay? That's what it means to have the mind of Christ. Okay? And, and, and skip down the, now to 29 and see the use of reputation. Reputation. Do you see that? Okay? Our reputation, according to this, in the eyes of that, you know, the Lord saves you. It's like, wow, I can't believe that you, you're a saved man. The way you used to be? Wow. Okay? See, you go from death onto life when the Lord saves you. A new creature? Okay? Okay? And the Lord who lives in you is who you represent. And now you keep that in mind when you come across these devils like the idiotic, sinless perfectionist, the vile, vomitous, putrid, dumb-ridden, uh, antinomianist free gracers, Catholics, <laughs> Father, Son, Holy Ghost, <laughs> God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, yeah, Trinity. But Philippians 2, now, 29 unto 30. Receive him therefore in the Lord, and Lord, with all gladness, and hold such in reputation. Reputation twofold. Fleshly or spiritual with a capital S. This is, is this getting through? I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Okay? Because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service toward me. There you see the charity. There you see the service. There you see servant. Guys who claim they don't sin anymore, look at me, look at me. It's all about them. Antinomianists, all they are about is how to justify sin. It's all about them. Catholics, all it is about them. Okay? Y you get it? And when it's all about you, well, the, the woman thou gavest me to be with, she did give me of the tree, and yeah, I did. Saint sooner or later gives that up. And see here, Colossians 2, Colossians 2, 18 and 23. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. See, again, you can tie into this to change life thing. Okay? The reputation changed life. As a lost man, you had a reputation as doing what? Or a lost woman, whatever, right? Now you're a saint. The reputation that you ought to be concerned about is how you are serving the Lord as an example unto others. And see, that will be demonstrated, dear saint, and a lot of you already know this, who you are when it's that wall, that wall, that wall, that wall, that ceiling, and that floor. Okay? And see, again, the thing about the changed life. What brought about that changed life you keep preaching about? Hey, dude, why don't you add, okay, changed life gospel, whatever you want, um, okay? What brought about that changed life? 
You, you need to add that, Twinkle Toes, okay? <laughs> you, you need to put that, you need to be clear about that. Because look at this. And not holding the head, from which all the body, by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. And people who change their life by their own means, you can't, that, that, that's exhausting. How do you know that, Brian? Look at how they always mess it up. Sooner or later, the fake will shoot themselves in the foot and be manifest. Okay? Hey, saints make mistakes. We mess up every day. Okay? We sin every day. We make mistakes. But see, a saint who has the Father within them, sooner or later will yield. And if one of us gets going too bad... The Lord will kill you. Okay? You could suddenly die. Lester Roloff got killed in a plane crash. Lester Roloff, who did also believe that you needed to be baptized in water. I, I, I got the sermon to prove it. Okay? Um, <laughs> why was he killed? He died in a plane crash. I'm not going to guess, but it's like, you know, one aspect, God is a jealous God, okay? But also, if you get messed up in something wrong and you refuse the Lord sooner or later, okay? I'm not, I'm not slander. I don't mean to slander, sound like I'm slandering, uh, lest the roll off. I believe that man is up there. Um, I, I've listened to him over the, the latter, any day of the week, yes, I, but he, he, he had, you know, like Leonard Ravenhill. Leonard Ravenhill had his issues. Okay. What was that? Mm. He tiptoed on sinless perfectionism. He tiptoed on the charismatic, uh, on the Pentecostal charismatic doctrine. Okay. All right. But yet, I, I think Leonard Ravenhill was up, is up there. Okay. Th never mind. Let's continue. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances? And my precept and the, my fear is taught by the precepts of men. Look at Catholics. Look at all. Look at all the ordinances that they give to people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Touch not. Taste not. Handle not. Lent. You know, certain days of fasting on the Roman Catholic Gregorian calendar, which unfortunately we're all under here. Okay. <laughs> Taste not. Handle not. Don't get that authorized version. Okay. Which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom in will worship. Wow, look at that guy. He, he says he stopped sinning. We proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that no, you can't stop sinning. And, dude, anyone comes to you, even idiot free gracers get this one right. And, well, okay, uh, if anyone comes around saying, you got to stop sinning, <laughs> get, get away from them. Take them to Romans 7. They're going to say, that was before he went, mm, no, that's present tense. That decimates their little stupid argument. Okay? They go around and around because their ways are movable that thou canst not know them. That's, that one's the more simpler. Okay, and free gracers that license the sin, evil that those guys believe on and preach. Uh, we talked about that quite at, uh, quite at length, okay? Quite, quite at length. <laughs> All right? All right? But, but I lost my place here. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Where are we? Uh, Colossians 2, uh, 18, okay? Oh, yeah, verse uh, 23. Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility. Like I said, they, they look good. They sound good. Hmm? And neglecting of the body. Not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. And that's interesting too because they do all of that to make the facade, to give off the facade that they're holy, righteous, pious. Look at me. I say myself on my own relief. Are these idiots? <laughs> no, 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 okay. A novice, you're a babe, 
Okay, please watch uh, the thing about that, that jerk open air preacher. Okay, that guy's the devil. You can't stop sinning. You can't stop sinning. No, you can't. Okay, uh, if you're uh, if you're a babe, okay, you can be you can be taken out of that readily. If you are willingly choosing to believe that you stop sinning, you're stupid and you're an idiot and you're a devil. There, I'm not being polite about that one anymore. That's stupid. That's stupid to think that. Well, I don't sin anymore. You're stupid and you're a devil. Period. I'm not being polite anymore about that. That's that's a that's a worthless waste of time and oh, it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Okay? Philippians 2. Now see, what we just looked at in Colossians 2 there, verses 18 on to verse 23, they had a change you could say with that, well, hey, which have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility. They changed their life by their own means. I used to do that, but I don't do that anymore. I used to do that, and I don't do that anymore. I, I... Yeah, I used to be a sodomite. The Lord got me out of that. I used to smoke cigarettes. The Lord got me out of that. Okay, I used to be addicted to many drugs. The Lord got me out of that. Okay? Okay? All right? So we see here an example of the two types of your changed life. Okay? Dude, if you're going to preach this change life doctrine or whatever you want to call it, at least make that distinction. Well, okay. Alcoholics, NA people, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, AA, NA, they have a changed life. Why, they sure will. Saints have a changed life. Why? Because they were made a new creature. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, verses 12 on to 13. For it is God which... Oh, uh, 12 on to 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Not in my presence only. When everyone's looking at you, eh, you could be a certain way. Who are you? Who are you when it's these four walls, ceiling, and floor? Huh? Who are you? Huh? Who are you? Who are you? See, that, that's why I don't trust a lot of people, uh, especially the YouTube guys, because, you know, like I said, who you see is who you would meet. The guy you see here is the same guy you would meet and interact with if we were to meet person to per person, you know, spirit's own body. <laughs> These other guys? Who you are when it's just you, the Lord, and the devil. I should say devils, because the devil himself can't be in multiple places like the Lord. Uh, the devil, I believe, is in Rome. But devils? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But see, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Don't miss that one. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out. What are you working out? That doesn't mean to save yourself. I'm sure that idiot open air preacher would come to that and say, like, see, you got to save yourself and blah, 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 and stop saying. Stupid. No. A saint has who in them? Come on. The Lord, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. He's in us and we are to work out. He is our salvation. Okay? All right? For it is God. <laughs> Verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will, to will, and to do of his good pleasure. To will. Okay? He's not going to force you, but he's going, he's going to make his will known to you. To will. To will. Read the scripture. Okay? Find out how the Lord wants you to walk. 
Okay, and then walk your talk and talk your walk. Okay? All right? To do of his good pleasure. Okay, that, 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 very simple. And Colossians 1, Colossians 1, verses 27 on to 29. To whom God would make known which is, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. But I'm sealed with the Holy Ghost. Good. The Lord is that spirit. It's not one God of three persons. It's a, no. One God comprised of Spirit, Holy Ghost, Soul, God the Father, Body, the Word, capital W, made flesh. Okay? Alright? And Christ in you, Jesus is the Father. You know, one God, you have the Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, okay? Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, of the Lord, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Not sinlessly perfect. You can't be sinlessly perfect. We proved that in, uh, what was that, uh, Wednesday's video, okay? We proved that, okay? What is a per heart relational? Okay. Whereunto I also labor, striving accord according to his working which worketh in me mightily. Now, we all mess up. We make mistakes. Some of us, really bad ones. But a saint sooner or later will submit. When you might not necessarily see, but see in the chastisement that comes. That chastisement will yield that peaceable fruit of righteousness. Hence, we saints can judge and see that the result of chastening. We can't see it when it's happening. Well, sometimes you can. It's like, oh, dude, I'm praying for you. Okay, sometimes you can. Some, most often you can't. Okay, but you can see the result thereof. Okay? I'm telling you, I have yet to see a genuine saint to react with indignation upon being uh, going through chastisement. I have yet to see a genuine saint. I have saw, seen and heard many who I thought were saints who go through something and then it's like, yeah, well, yeah, I wish the Lord hadn't put me through that. Did it? Well, whose fault was it? Well, they did this to me and they did this to me and then I did... Oh, Really? Really? Well, who's well, well, of course it's my fault. But you just said to me, it's this, 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 this. And yeah, of, co of course it's, yeah, of course I made a boo-boo, right? See, that, that's what you fakes don't have. That's what, you, some of you can fake it, but... You know, especially with me, I get on your nerves. <laughs> um, when you're scratched, when you're cut to the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Who you are, in secret, comes out openly. See, you, you fakes, you don't got that. We, we saints can be like, oh, are you? But see the peaceable fruit of righteousness come out sooner or later a true saint <laughs> thou art righteous O oh Lord thou art just I, what am I going to say I throw myself upon your mercies the self justification ends and see you, you devils, you, you know, you, you'll have this thing where you'll, you, it'll seem, you'll put on this facade, this shoe, this performance, that you have reached that point. But then, what happens? Time goes on, right back to your vomit. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 119. A left. Like I said, I, I read Psalm 119, and every single time I read that blessed, beautiful psalm, um, I, I, there's always something. Always. Psalm 119, Aleph. If you can't find Psalm 119, Aleph, then you and I have to have... <laughs> you, you, you need to hear, you know, take your scriptures and... You know, don't breathe in that dust. Okay? If you can't so find Psalm... Uh, 119 a left yeah. blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart the whole heart not just to for your own benefit but for the benefit of others when it hurts and the fake Christians are all about avoidance of pain. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, and right, right there, you know, you crazy, sinless perfection idiots. It's like, see, you got the number one, this is under the law. Okay, but okay, okay. Verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. The Lord has said, this is the way. Walk ye in it. This is the way. Lord Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Who, which Jesus is the right one? Read the authorized version. You'll, know, you'll be led to the right one. But see, again, you need to make the decision. You do not have the faith of Jesus Christ. Jesus' actual faith in you. No, you do not. That's wicked Calvinistic heresy. Okay? And if that were the truth, then why are you still sinning? Okay? You do not have the mind of Jesus. Meaning that you, you know, then why do you, the, the thought of foolishness is sin. Why do you still think wicked things? Okay? You cannot stop sinning. You're not God! I don't think so. I, 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 I. Just as if I. Just as if I. Have you noticed by now, dear saint, that all of Christianity is just about just as if I? Great place to find the example of that is one of these Jesuit trained cemeterian idiots. Okay? <laughs> there you go. Huh. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Here, he's directed us, yes. But you got to make the right choice. Then will I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. And today, of course, I mean, if you deny him, he'll deny us. That's not talking about salvation. We covered that in the, uh, the thing about the sinless, that, that open air idiot, okay? Well, that will be in the description box as well, okay? All right? All right? Okay, but if we deny him in other ways in our walk, oh, he can deny us a lot of things. But salvation isn't ours. It's his. And if you're saved, you're sealed. Once saved, always saved. That's how that works, okay? Okay? Now, the name. Name. A good name is rather to be chosen. What, and what was, our, what was our starting text? Besides uh, Proverbs 9, huh? What was our thing where we began our little adventure here today? Huh? Proverbs 22, 1. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Hmm. And then, of course, in Ecclesiastes, let's refresh our memories. Ecclesiastes 7, 1. A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. 
because we get to go home. <laughs> See ya. Love you guys. Um, you know, in heaven with the Lord, your 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 mind, your it's you're going to be with Jesus. I seriously doubt that the saints up in heaven are just like, oh, I'm sorry, I wish. I no, they don't. <laughs> they, you know, yeah, I mean, there might be some it's like. You know, wow, Lord, you wish, you know, if I were down there, but, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I find it difficult to believe that a saint up in heaven would, you know, it's like, hey, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I'm not there with you, but wait till you get here, okay? Uh, you're with Jesus. You're with Jesus. That's our everything. He is our all. He is our everything. He is everything. And in heaven, I truly believe the saint is going to be um, consumed with the Lord Jesus Christ to the point where it's like, well, I'm sorry that's happening, but you know what? Wait till you get here. All those, you know, these passing things, the light afflictions. Okay, light afflictions. That's the eternal mindset. And see, we saints, we are to have the eternal mindset. And see, that's the thing about the fake. They don't have the eternal mindset. So come on, dude. The boasting of how I don't sin anymore. Or trying to justify any sin that you can come up with. Come on. Come on. Eternally minded. Yeah. Yeah. My right buttock. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. A good name. As we saw. As we saw. Yes. Reputation is twofold. Reputation is twofold. There's a reputation we all had when we were lost devils, right? Now that we're saved saints, changes. Proverbs 18.10 The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. What's the name of the Lord? Christ. Christ means the anointed one. Uh, who, who was anointed? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. See, if, if you were a Jesusite, that would be, uh, okay, which one are you talking about? But that would be a little bit, you know, Christian. Hmm. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Hmm. And uh, 16 on the verse, uh, oh, excuse me, Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Psalm 118. I didn't read this one today. I read that one yesterday. Psalm 118, verses 11 and 12. They can pass me about. Yea, they can pass me about. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They can pass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. Mm. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Mm. Psalm 129. Psalm 129. Hopefully we can finish this one before the three hour mark, huh? Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. May Israel now say. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. And if this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. But it is. But if it is of God, thou canst not overthrow it. Lest haply thou found be found to fight against God. I just totally Brad I said. The plower is plowed upon my back. They made long their furrows. The Lord is righteous. He hath cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Let them all be confounded and turned back that hate Zion. Zion. Israel. Jerusalem. Whatever. Israel. But placement theology is that the body of Christ, or as Rome teaches you, that they, the church, has replaced the Jew, Israel. What a, what a wicked, warped form 
of replacement theology is it when you're your own God and save yourself by your own belief ooh, or you're God and can't and don't sin anymore talk about all you talk about a grotesque form of replace because what are you replacing God who is with yourself what you do <laughs> It's not funny. It's, it's laughable. It's laughable. Let them be as the grass upon the housetops, which wither, which withereth afore it groweth up, wherewith the mower filleth not his hand, nor he that bindeth sheaves his bosom. Because yeah, it's burnt up. Neither do they which go by say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Mm. Mm. Isaiah 50. Isaiah 50. Isaiah 50. 10 and 11. Isaiah 50. 10 and 11. Don't worry, we'll look at that in a second. Isaiah 50. 10 and 11. Who among you that fear, who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant? that walketh in darkness, and hath no light, let him trust in the name of the Lord, and stay upon his God. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness, and hath no light, let him trust in the name of the, of the Lord, and stay upon his God. Sometimes you can't see an end, sometimes, right? Sometimes you get hopeless feeling, right? Praise the Lord. That means... Where else can you turn to? A saint sooner or later gives up the fight. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. And what's the name of the Lord? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Behold, all ye that kindle a fire, that compass yourselves about with sparks, Walk in the light of your fire. Let the gods that you believe in, yourself and the devil, save you in the time of your need. And in the sparks that ye have kindled. Oh, the devil has kindled a lot of sparks, hasn't he? This shall ye have of mine hand. My hand, excuse me. Ye shall lie down in sorrow. And Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. 6 on 8. The voice said, cry, and he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And to the fake, the Christian, it's all about flesh. And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the lowercase s, spirit of the Lord, bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall endure it. And also Hosea, chapter 6. Hosea 6. Hosea, chapter 6. It's right after Daniel. Hosea 6. Right after Daniel. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, and the third day he will rise us up, raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. You could death, burial, and resurrection tie that in hey, easily. Anyone can see that. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain upon the earth. O Ephraim! What shall I do unto thee? O oh, Judah, what shall I do unto thee? And see, the fake. For your goodness is as the morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Your goodness. See, the saint's goodness is in us. You know, I, I'm not a good person. I'm not a good person. I'm not good. Something good, that ain't me. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He is goodness. Not me. Not me. That's why with the fake, it's like the flower, the grass. Okay? <laughs> okay? All right? All right? And again, the fire. Oh, these, uh, these devils. Oh, they, they're, they're engulfed. Uh, they're, excuse me. They're consumed in fire. They, they you know, kindle fire, right? Uh -huh. Job 41. Job 41. Job 41. We've talked actually extensively about Job. Job 41, 15 on to 24. His scales are his pride. Shut up together as with a closed seal. His scales, his covering. Skin suit. Shut up together as with a closed seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. No air. <sighs> Breath of God. When you're in the flesh like that, like these devils are, all about their flesh, <laughs> the, the impossible is possible with God. Okay, but you gotta remember, you gotta remember this. By his, uh, they are so they are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. By his kneesings, a light doth shine. No marvel, Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light. And every precious stone was his covering. The anointed cherub, yeah. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Son of the morning, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke. As out of a seething pot or cauldron, his breath kindleth coals and a Flame goeth out of his mouth. They're all about causing strife and division, trying to separate brethren or lying, smear campaign, bold face lying. They rest not unless they cause some to fall. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. Yeah, the Lord wants you to be sorrowful over your sin. Okay, to be horrified of it. The antinomianist is like, live in your sin. Find a way to justify your sin. Hey, sin is good because the more you sin, the more grace you get. And they don't, not, at least not to my you never know what that idiot Tom or that idiot Jack Smack, you never know what those idiots but um, the ones that I have listened to before, I have not come across one of those free gracers who blazon, brazenly say that. But they, you know, her ways are movable. They always get around to implying that. Even though they, you know, again, it's the same thing where they would never say with their mouth there is no Lord, but in works they deny him. Okay? So, where in you ought to be horrified of sin, the antinomianist, hey, live in it, revel in it, it's okay. It's okay, don't worry about it. And all the while, the God that they're serving, they're, they're magnifying their God that sin is a light thing. That's not the God of Scripture. And, of course, with the ridiculous sinless perfectionist, which we don't even need to mention, because, hey, you stop sinning, oh, you, you're God then, huh? Dude, dude, again, if you encounter a sinless perfectionist, laugh at them. Don't take them serious. Go to Romans 7. That, that'll destroy their argument, boom, just like that. No, it's all present tense, you idiot. Okay? You're, you're, well, Paul was a fa false prophet. Ah, there you go. There you go. Okay, see you later, man. <laughs> all right? All right? His heart, okay, the, the flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. Firm in themselves. The flakes of his flesh, do you see that? Are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be 
moved. <laughs> that, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. Because thou hast said in thine heart, there is no God except you. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Yes. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, 17 and 18. Ezekiel 28, 17 and 18. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By iniquity, by the iniquity of thy traffic with a K. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. They shoot themselves in the foot all the time, man. Takes a while with them, but they will. Okay? And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Uh, and John 8. Okay, of course. John 8. Gotta go there. John 8. John 8. 43 and 44. <laughs> Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own fire folding within him. Out of his mouth, out of his mouth, lamps, smoke, sparks, fire. Okay? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Micah 4. Micah chapter 4. Micah 4. Just two verses. Not Obadiah. Not Habakkuk. Micah 4, verse 3 and verse 5. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war, war any more. But they shall sit. Am I reading you the right one? Yes. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree. And none of them shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. The mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. And the fake, obviously, don't speak for the true Lord. And Acts chapter 14, uh, Acts chapter 4, excuse me, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, a good name. Whose name? Whose name? Yahashawushi, Hushi, whatever. Yahashua, or what? This. Whose name will be in the description box? Uh, Acts 4 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What does Jesus say in John 14, verse 6? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And Philippians 2, of course you got to go there. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, verses 9 and verse 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That the name of Jesus. Well, the great. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. The Lord rebuke you. 
Well, the Greek one, shut up. Hey, which Greek are you talking about? Which one? Which one? Shut up. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, and every living thing will, everything will, sooner or later. That doesn't mean that, <laughs> no, no, but I mean, when you lost people are going to be standing at the great white throne of judgment, uh, he's Lord, okay, whether you like to admit it or not, okay, not everybody's going to be saved, okay, not everyone, okay, <laughs> please, please, that's, that's, that's kind of a stupid thing, okay? And Psalm 138, though. Now here, and here's the interesting part. There's only one name, Jesus Christ. At the name of Jesus. Which Jesus? The one who is given to you in the authorized version. Not three persons that make one God. That, that's heresy. That is absolute satanic Catholic heresy. And that's not even fit to be used to wipe betwixt. Okay? But Psalm 139, uh, 138, excuse me. Psalm 138, verses 1 on to verse 2. I will praise thee with my whole heart before the little g gods. Will I sing praise unto thee? I, sh I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and, and for thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Well, at the name of Jesus. Well, the Greek. Hey, Christian. What's the perfect standard? They all say the same thing. You're, you, you're smoking what Dade smokes. No, they're not. No, they don't. The Bibles don't agree with each other. Muslims can pick, point that one out. Okay? Well, the originals. The originals. You mean the ones written by David and Moses and stuff like that. You mean those originals. Yeah? yeah? They don't exist. They did at one time, but they, they wore out. They don't exist anymore. Oh, oh, you mean the ones that are in um, the, in Rome, Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, and whatnot, right? yeah. which don't agree with each other, have whole books missing, and uh, teach contrary to the uh, actual Word of God. <laughs> yeah. See, you say something like that, you are your own standard. See, saints are supposed to trust what he gave us. God can do all things, but yet he can't give man a perfect standard, but yet he can, he can, you believe, okay, you Christians, you say you believe in God and he can do all things, but he doesn't give you a perfect standard to what accurately tells you who he is. Because, hey, in the Bible, Jesus lied when he went to the feast, right? Right? Jesus got angry too, didn't he? Right? Yeah. See, we are to learn of the Lord through a perfect standard which He has given us. The authorized version. He has, you can, for, uh, uh, for thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. What does that mean? You can trust this. See, a saint is supposed to trust sword that we do battle with, that we wage war with, against ourselves first, but against the enemy. But Satan, the first thing he did, yea, hath God said, you got to stop sinning, believe and receive, you got to go to Christ's church that he founded, you're, you're elect because you're black or, uh, or British. It's not funny. 
It's not funny. In the name of Jesus. And Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12. Not Luke. Matthew 12. Verses 34 and 37. Matthew 12, 34 and 37. You, you, you loving little Jesus that never insulted anyone. O oh, generation of vipers! Calling them serpents. A viper, a serpent. Okay, a viper that latched on Paul's hand. Viper, a serpent. Devils? Yeah. Yeah. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. The good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And let it be that hidden man of the heart. Okay? I know that appears in the content where that's, where that's said in Peter uh, and women, but the point is the hidden man of the heart. Who's the man of our heart? Saints. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father I, ye will do. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, five, death, okay? But I say unto you, dispensational difference here, but instruction and in righteousness, okay? But I say unto you that every idle, I-D-L-E, not moving, just running, you know, uh, shadow boxing, if you will. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. As we proved yesterday, my words, I was wrong. I made an error. In the marriage video about the concubine thing about um, Bilhah and whatever her name was. I forget her name offhand. Uh, the scriptures uh, called them the wives of Jacob. Okay? There's a difference between concubine and a wife. Yes, there is. We talked about that in the marriage video. Okay? But, okay, I made a mistake. All right? Condemned. Okay? For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. A question. Matthew 12. Did he die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No, he did not. Okay, did he shed his blood yet? No. He was the king offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? So, he's preaching the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven which is all works. So see, 36 and 37. Instruction and righteousness. Okay? You shall know them by their fruits. There are some, uh, the Mr. Fig. Oh, he's, he's a smooth, he's a smooth talker. Even little Scott over there, he, he's smooth. He's smooth. He's smooth. Smooth talkers. But see, their speech bereath thee. The, you know, and, and in this, and this what we're talking about, you can't even count the antinomianists. Because they willfully use profanity. <laughs> willfully. Willfully. Okay, they do. And evil communications corrupt good manners. That includes profanity, but they're preaching another Jesus and another gospel anyway. Okay? So, instruction in righteousness, verse 30, uh, 36 and 37, instruction in righteousness for us today, yes, doctrinally... Doctrinally, 36 and 37. That's for the kingdom of heaven. Because uh, I'm sure an antinomianist would come to them, well, those are works. <laughs> Good for you, genius. Yeah. Okay? But our instruction and in righteousness. Remember, he I rightly divide the word of truth. He hath not died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is abundant in instruction and in righteousness for us. Sooner or later, brethren, they shoot themselves in the foot. Matthew 6, Sermon on the Mount, 21 on the 24. Matthew 6, 21 on the 24. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. 
If therefore thine, light, thine eye be single on Jesus, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. And no marvel, Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light. Lucifer, son of the morning, every precious stone was thy covering, those precious, glittering, bright jewels. Okay? Two lights. The uh, greater to rule the day, the lesser to rule the night. Okay? Light, darkness. You get it? And here's what Christianity has, and it's impossible. <laughs> okay, no man can serve two masters. Antinomianists are the greatest example of this. You can have both worlds. You can have the world and go be a Christian. You can do everything you want and not have to worry about it because his grace abounds. The more you do, the better it is for you anyway because you get more grace. It shows you that God loves you unconditionally. And they're preaching another Jesus anyway. Usually the three-person one, which is not the true God. Okay? All right? <laughs> so, but they offer you, hey, you can have it both ways. Solomon tried that. Solomon. And he failed. It can't be done. Why do you think Christianity is failing? Why do you think Christianity is a mockery? Because number one, it's not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints, and they're trying to serve flesh and spirit. And you can't do that. If you're in sin, you're serving flesh. If you're doing what's right, you're serving the Lord. See, there's no gray area. There is no option C. It's yay or nay, brethren. And see, the devil, well, what about option C? What about option D? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That one ham, that one ham, I guy, walking around like this thing with this look on his face, showing off his tattoos and well fit young man, look you know, physically fit. It's like you poor creature. You're so concerned about how you look to the world, but you have no care for how you look in the sight of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're more concerned about what men think of you. That's, that's the enemy. And Christianity offers you, hey, you can have both worlds. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And now, the fake, Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Now remember, brethren, the fake can do a lot of things to make themselves look as if they're saints. They can sound as if they are saints. But in time, sooner or later, the person, spirit, soul, and body, they are when it's just them, the Lord, and the devils, okay, um, will come out eventually. Matthew 23, 5 on 7. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Um, when people ask me, so well, what do you do? I do. I, uh, I used to say, well, I'm a teacher. So, oh, what school? Where'd you go? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I say, um, you, I either say, usually say I'm a minister, but, but if some people will ask, I'm a preacher. And like, 
couple of views. Like, well, Brad, you know, you, that's what you're doing by. I know. Okay, I don't like to. I don't like to call. I don't like to be ascribed to anything like that. Even though, yeah, I know. Okay. Okay, but see the title, apostle. This apostle. You, you see this, you know, pastor. This and pastor. Pastors are. Yes, yes, but you know. Living in the title, living in the flesh, a reputation of religiosity. Huh? Religiosity. Ooh, that would be a good one for the. Beg your pardon, okay? All right? And Matthew 25, 25 on to 20, 23, verses 25 on to 28. And see, Matthew 23 is describing this spiritual climate for the redemption of the purchased possession. Before the time of Jacob's trouble. Redemption of the purchased possession. Time of Jacob's trouble. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye may clean the outside of the cup and the platter. But within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee. Cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also. See, the new creature. You know, you can clean up your life through your own means, but if you're not a new creature, who did it? You did. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but within but are within full of dead men's bones, dead in trespasses and sins, and all of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within, but within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. But within. 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians 4, <laughs> verses oh, 3, on to verse 7. But with me it is a very small thing that I shall be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. See, this means Paul wasn't his own standard. You read in the... Uh, um, uh, uh, Romans 7 Romans 7 Romans 7 where he says um, where he says um, verse 21 Paul wasn't his own standard what was his standard uh, verse 21 in Romans 7 uh, 20 and 21 20 on to 22 excuse me now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law. Question there, genius. Where would you find the law? Scripture. Meaning, what was Paul's standard? He judges not himself. What was his standard? What's our standard? The Scripture. How do we judge ourselves? Scripture. How does God judge us? Scripture. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Verse 23. But I, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Law of sin. Meaning... As long as your spirit and soul are in this sagging sin suit, you, you can't stop sinning. It's impossible. It's impossible. Okay? Back to 1 Corinthians 4, verse 3 again. But with me it is a very small thing that I shall be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I just not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. For Paul right there is like, well, I, I, you know, I know nothing by myself. My judgment is flawed. That's why we need a perfect standard to judge us. Judge us first, yes. But you can bet your bottom that we're judging you by the very same standard that we judge ourselves. And see, the fake hate that. Oh, the antinomianists is like, you can't judge me. 
Don't ju- only God can judge me. The fake, the Christians. Only God can judge me. How does God judge you today? Through the scripture, you twit. I'm a saint. The Father dwells in me. I judge me first. Guess what, cousin? Oh, I'm judging you. Oh, you betcha. I, you betcha. And you can read 1 Corinthians 6 yourself in your own time. We're supposed to judge us and then you. Yes, us saints. We ju- I, I'm judging you. You know why? Because I'm judging myself from a perfect standard. And if I, I'm judging me first, I'm, I'm judging you. <laughs> okay? This is how God judges us. You know, when you give an account to the Lord at the great white throne, you people who get left behind, uh, th- this is what you're going to be judged by. The sword that comes out of his mouth is not a literal sword like you've seen the pictures of Jesus with a big thing. Coming. No. Sword of the Spirit. His word. That's what you're going to be judged by. Why do you think Satan has given you so many counterfeits? Okay? All right? That, 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 that's that temple. Okay? Now, Verse 5. The heretics love this one. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. That's talking about the second coming. Keep reading. Who will both who both will bring light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart and then shall every man have praise of God. Hmm. What does that mean? Until the Lord come, until you're saved. Romans 2 talks about the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah, judgest thou who doest the same things. Two lost people judging themselves upon their own standard is kind of like pisseth against the wind. It doesn't work. Okay, why? Because this, them, they are their own standard. You need a standard that is perfect. The authorized version, the scripture. Okay, so two lost people judging themselves is kind of like, you know, <laughs> redundant. Okay, in the dictionary under the redu- under redundant, it says to see redundant. Okay, and, and it's, it's stupid. Okay, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Uh, unless you're saved, you don't have a perfect standard to judge upon. See, and once the Lord saves you, He's here. Sooner or later, He's going to guide you to His Word. The authorized version. And you've been a Christian for 20 years, and you're going to tell me that the Lord led you away? I, have you encountered this one yet, brother? Well, well, you know, God showed me that there are better than you. No, He did not. No, He did not. The Bibles are, yea, hath God said. The Bibles come from Rome! No. Oh, oh, nay, nay. <laughs> you know, the Spirit of God that dwelleth in you, he, he cannot sin. Okay? God, the Father, and you cannot, will not sin, and will not guide you into sin. The Bibles are sin. The Scriptures are perfect. Okay? I've encountered that. Well, I've been saved for, what was, what was it, 14 years. It's like, yeah, and God, you know, guided me away from the King James Version because there are better... No, he didn't, dude. No, he did not. No, he did not. God, no, he did not. God didn't say it was okay. No, he did not. You're a liar. You're not saved. You're not saved or you're greatly deceived because you want to be. Because you want to be your own standard. And when you want to be your own standard over what God has said, uh... What are you trying to trying to justify something that you know that he hates? So, therefore, judge nothing before the time, because your judgment is flawed, until the Lord come. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. And how does uh, the Lord judge you? Okay, through Scripture. Okay, all right. Who will both? who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, what sins in you that, you know, might, you might not even be aware of, but most of the times we are, okay? And will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise of God. 
And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one be one of you be puffed up for one against another. Oh, there we go. Charlatans. People with false humility, but using it as a means to bolster themselves up. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didn't, didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? I don't sin anymore. <laughs> I say myself by my own belief. I, I speak in tongues. That's, that's a gift for special Christians. Or I, I've cast out a few demons. That's, that's reserved for special Christians. Hey, I'm elect because I'm a Hamite. Or a Japhetite. Yeah. 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 Again. Uh, heretics. Uh, that one crazy idiot sky out. Loved this one. Oh, he sure did. Uh, he's like, the only, and I've, I've encountered this. And so have you. With that. Oh, only God can judge me. You're right. You're right. Yeah, sure. Through this. I belong to the Lord. He lives within me. I, I, I start, the judgment begins at the house of God with me first, okay? And I'm judging myself by this standard. Guess what? I'm judging you too. And as a lost person, your standard is your own. Hence, the antinomianist, this stupid, sinless perfectionist, the Catholic, and you can go on down the line. They are their own God. Their standard is themselves. Okay? Okay? Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. We're, we're going to be, uh, this might be one of those close to three hour ones. So, <laughs> Proverbs 29. 25 on the 28. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. When you got that, that, that uh, muscular looking Hamite guy walking around, this with the look and showing off his tattoos and muscles and you see these guys who are so it's important how they look to the outside world but within they are full of dead men's bones why do you care now granted okay that doesn't mean that you go around looking like an unkempt bed that doesn't mean you as a saint are going to be wearing Slayer Rain and Blood t-shirts or stuff. That common sense. Gamaliel had common sense. Do you? Okay. Common sense here, people. Okay. We are ambassadors for Christ. You know, we talk about the, the sisters. You know, wearing, you know, modest clothing. Not skin tight stuff to show up. Okay. Don't need to see your curves. Thank you very little. That holds for us men too. Men wearing short shorts. I saw that yesterday. It did. <laughs> okay. And it's like you obviously want to be noticed, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Or the, the, the men's wearing the tight stuff. You know, the shot their eight pack or whatever they got, you know. It, it holds both ways. Okay? Common sense there. But see, when you make your physical appearance the be all end all because of what? Because of the fear of man? Ooh, you got issues. You gotta put on a face, you gotta put on your Sunday bet show <laughs> show me. <laughs> show me that in scripture. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Give me a break with that. Give me a break with that. <laughs> Seriously, man. Give me a break with that. Okay? Many seek the rules, ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Amen. Amen. And see, you fake people, when you encounter a saint, you don't want to hear what we got to say because we judge ourselves by a perfect standard and you get it. we judging you too. Okay? I didn't ask. Well, I don't care. <laughs> that, that, that's irrelevant. You know, this is the standard. This is what we're all going to be judged by. 
You know, us for our, our, for our rewards when we go up there at the judgment seat. You others at the great white throne. Okay? An unjust man is an abomination to the just. That is why I don't understand how saints can tolerate being in the presence of a known lost wicked devil without any repercussions. I don't understand that. I don't. I don't. I be and it makes me begin to question. Yeah. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Psalm 108. Thank you, Lord. And that, 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 that came like, boop, right there. Psalm 108. Psalm 108. No, Psalm 102. Psalm 102, excuse me. Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Where it says, uh, uh, I watch upon the house side. Verse 8. Mine enemies reproach me all the day. The enemies of our Lord. The antinomianists, the, the sinless perfectionists, Catholics, German Catholics, Presbyterians, Methodists, Pentecostals. Okay, is Christ divided? Uh, well, your, your Jesus is, yeah, but the Jesus who is, no. Mine enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are mad against me are sworn against me. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Sworn enemies against those who are uh, uh, against us. That's why they hate us. Because we represent the true God. And also, Proverbs 28, you can't get away from this. 25, uh, uh, 22 under 25, I wrote it backwards there like an idiot. He that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye, and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. All, the, all this of the world will I give thee. If you fall down and worship me, all will be thine. He that rebuketh a man afterwards. Wait, wait, what, what am I reading from? Ah, continue on. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the tongue. God loves you. You don't have to stop. You don't have to. You can't. You're right. You can't stop sinning. But you don't even have to worry about sinning. Ah, uh, no, nay, nay. Okay. <laughs> or <laughs> I, I've decked my soul, my bed with coverings of tapestry. I came to meet thee. Okay. Whoso robbeth his father or his or his mother and saith it is no transgression. Same as the companion of a destroyer. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. God knows my heart. I stop sinning. I just I am saved because I just believe. I go to Christ's church that he founded. I'm black, so therefore I'm saved. I'm from I'm from England. Therefore, I'm saved. Or whatever nonsense you want to put in there. Right? Hmm. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He that giveth unto the, unto the poor shall not lack. But he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. When wicked rise, men hide themselves. But when they perish, the righteous increase. Psalm 121, Psalm 121, Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. You're reading this tomorrow. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. See, Christianity depends on themselves, on flesh. Our help comes from where? Philippians, uh, wait, wait, wait. Philippians 3, verses 12 on to 14. Philippians 3, verses 12 on to verse 14. 
not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehend of Christ, apprehended of Christ Jesus. You know, the longer we walk with the Lord, the harder it gets. But you run into so many of these Christians who have been saved for years and 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 years, and years whatever. They have this been there, done that mentality. And while we have experience, it's not something that would be, you know, jammed in others' faces. Um, okay? All right? All right? <laughs> Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. The farther I go with our Father, the more I hate myself. I hate two persons, spirit, soul, and body on this earth. I hate two persons, myself and the bloke of Blackpool. I hate two people on this earth, okay? I'm number one. And the longer with much wisdom comes much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. O oh, wretched man that I am. I can't stop sinning. I won't be able to be sinless until I'm dead and with the Lord. And every day is a new day. Every day I am reminded of how inadequate I am. But it seems that a lot of these been there, done that Christians out there, they're a little too high on the horse there, Hatsha. Oh, I've been, I've done this. I, I, I feel like Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord or or, you know, my ministry have done this and that and that. Blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Why oh, you got to boast yourself? Well, they for... Okay. Okay. Just once. But when you're doing it all the time, Ken Helvin right away comes to mind. Okay. And, of course, the other one that all of you already know who we're thinking of. Um, yeah. And shut up. Shut up. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And see, the enemy wants you to dwell on those things. We're, we're, we're supposed to grow up and go forward. Okay? And reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, that crown of righteousness that we will get from the Lord himself. Which, of course, we'll cast at his feet, of course. Okay, the prize, Jesus Christ. He's going to give us a crown, but that, that crown, Jesus is Jesus. He is our everything. They said, we're going to be in heaven. <laughs> Ground. Wow. The, the Lord, you know? Jesus is. And my reward, my reward is with me. Yes, we're going to get a crown of righteousness. But in comparison to the true riches. Okay? Comprende? <laughs> okay, you, you're with me there. All right. 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. We're almost done. We're almost done. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 12 and verse 18. For we dare not make ourselves of the number. Hey, King James Bible believer in Christianity, you've made yourself of the number. You are just another denomination with your own cultic little crazy nitwits and all your little thing. King James Bible believing Christianity, King James Bible believing movement is nothing more now than a denomination. You've got what you wanted. Are you happy now? You've made yourself of the number. Well, King James Bible believing Christianity, Methodist, Presbyterian, Baptist. Well, there are Baptists that are King James Bible believing Christians. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. 
But see, the people who are all about King James Bible, even Christianity, they themselves are preaching it as if they have already made it a denomination. King James Bible believing Christian is just whatever. Well, I'm a King James Bible. It's a denomination now. It's a denomination. You've put God into a category. Bravo, genius. Okay, good for you. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with them that commend themselves. I'm saying because I just believe. I stopped sinning. Okay. <laughs> I'm a King James Bible believing Christian. <laughs> I go to the, whatever. You get the point. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. And hey, you guys who know about Ruckman, you know he said this. Ruckman said, but if you're going to do it, but if you're going to do it, pick a big one. He actually said that, and I, somewhere I got the sermon where he actually said that. Those of you who are fans of Ruckman, fans of Ruckman, you know that he said that too. Uh, you, you shouldn't do that. But if you're going to do it, the same guy who said, uh, when you're in a building, you're anti-New Testament. But if you're going to do it, get, 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 give me a... <laughs> you think that man was saved. Man, that, what, what? Love you, brother. Love you. Love you. Okay? <laughs> Whatever. We'll find out. We'll find out. But we will not boast of things without our measure. But according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure. The new creature thing, okay? We are a new creature, boasting of things without our measure. I was once this. The Lord did this. Okay? That is of other men's labors. Uh, not boasting of things without our measure. That is of other men's labors. But having hope. When your faith is increased. That, ye shall, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. And it says right there. Of other men's labors. Okay? Other men have laid the groundwork for us. And we are to continue in that. God uses man. Yes, he does. Okay? To preach the gospel in the regions uh, beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready in our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that is commended, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. And if this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. Now, over the years, I've known of several heretics that have fallen silent, and some fall silent until their Jesuit masters decided, like, "Hey, go after them," and they they do that. <laughs> hey, there, sweetie pie. Okay, <laughs> all right, but. Brethren, people, you got to watch it with these guys who, who've been doing this for a long time and all they're doing is boasting themselves. Reliving what they used to do or what they've done or, you know. And yeah, I know Paul did that, but he was, he was pressed upon greatly and you only, we only read about it once. Okay? He made the reference on several occasions like, I was once this. The Lord made me this. But when you hear these guys, it's like, well, this, uh, I did this, 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 this. Look at me now, look at me. Shut up. Shut up. Shut, just shut up. Shut up. Shut up. And ultimately, 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. Verses 17 on 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Born again. 
Paul never talked about born. I uh, never said born again. No, he didn't. He defined it. <laughs> he he told you what it meant to be born again. What it was to be born again. You're right. He never said the phrase born again. That, that, if you that that that's that's linked with hyper grace, uh, hyper dispensationalism, the anti. Just laugh at it. Okay, you're right. He did. That's the stupid, like, well, in the book of John, repentance isn't used. Okay? It is elsewhere. What's your point? See, the level that the devil will go to to justify themselves. I've seen. You ever try to have a discussion with someone that turns into a shouting match because they want to? Continue to justify themselves. The uh, our dear, our dear, our dear. You know, one of the one of the sweetest saints. One of the sweetest saints I have ever met. Mano y mano. I, I you know, uh, our brother from New Jersey, a sweetheart. Our brother Jeff, a sweetheart. Uh, all of the brethren are sweethearts. All of them, and the sisters. But uh, personally, the sweetest saint I have ever met, Brother Bobby. Uh, he's a sweetheart of man. Sweetheart of man. Okay, just, just like the absolute gentlest, sweetest saint you would ever, would ever meet. And, and that man, and that man, you know, we all sin. But, you know, that man has a heart for the Lord that, um, number one, he, he doesn't, you know, when you have a heart like that for the Lord, you're the last one to recognize it, okay? But that's a perfect example. This dear brother, hello, brother. That dear brother is a great example, okay? We struggle with the old man, flesh. But see, the new creature, a saint messed up. Sooner or later, going to break that and stop it. The round and round of trying to justify themselves. Because we can't. See, you're not a saint. Oh, and you're, and you're worse. A saint who knows a little scripture. And you can go here and here and here. Quote this and this and this and that and that. Yeah. The woman that thou gavest me to be with, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. Not of yourself. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation. There are different places in the body of Christ, you know, for to do this. We've talked about that. You read the book of Ephesians chapter 4, I believe that is. Okay. Uh, there are different positions within the body of Christ. But every single one of us is in the ministry of reconciliation. We are not one exalted above another. And those who have are in this position, uh, the mind of Christ, we're supposed to serve other people. It's all about you. Yes, we saints get into that. But see, the Father within us chastises us. Okay? He does. And if, if you're a saint and you're doing something you know that he hates, you ain't getting no chastisement. Dude, you, that ought to scare the hell out of you. That, that, ought, to, that ought to make you poop your pants. I, I'm serious. Um, if you're doing something that you know, then you know, you know, there's no justifying it. If you're justifying it and you ain't getting any chastisement of the Lord, and you happen to be a saint. Dude. <laughs> To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. 
and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They are the ambassadors for their little God, their Jesus, who loves you unconditionally, who doesn't judge, who doesn't care about sin, oh, except from the ones of the saints who tell you to rightly divide and you, you, you know you need to strive against sin. Okay? All right? Yeah. Yeah. But we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. The way you serve the Lord reflects Him. When you're outside your door there, dude, sister, how you behave, your communication reflects what treasure is in your heart. Like I said, when it's the four walls, ceiling and floor, that's who you really are. And you know that. And who you really are here in that time when it's just you and the Lord and the devils um, is revealing. Absolute suffering reveals absolutely. You wonder why, you know, pain, pain, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you, in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. Christ, that, mean, that doesn't mean that we're little Christ. You know, Christ himself isn't physically on the earth. His body is. That's what that means. Okay, we're not little Christ's. The Lord rebuke you, okay? A little no, no, no. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. Now, that, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath, and this is what lost people, faith don't have any comprehension of. You can't. You can't because you're not saved. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Meaning he died for us on the cross. You read Isaiah 53. And see, when you're like the wicked antinomianist who all they are about is justifying sin, you don't get it. You're lost. You're trying to justify the very thing that put the Lord on the cross. Okay, You're trying to justify it. And doing well because your audience is usually um, ignorant of Scripture at your behest. See, trying to justify sin. Or, or saying that you don't sin anymore. <laughs> okay? You get it, people? Psalm 119. <laughs> Shin. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what uh, song, I don't know what shim means. One of the brethren asked me today. <laughs> Brad, what, what does shin mean? <laughs> what does shin mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. Hold on, I gotta find it. I gotta find it. <laughs> Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Okay, hold on, where am I? Well, one second. Okay, that's why I was having trouble finding it. It's at the very bottom of the page, and it's only the first verse. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, this isn't my Cambridge or the Alon. Uh, Psalm 119, Shin, which is verses 163 on 168. Princes have persecuted me without a cause. But my heart standeth in awe of thy word. Princes. Princes. Huh? Look at that. Look at that verse again. Princes have persecuted me without a cause. 
Hmm, without a cause. Why did they hate you without a cause? Because you're uh, 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 an ambassador for Christ. The Christ who is. Ephesians 2, 1 and 4. And you hath he quickened, made alive, who are dead in trespasses and sins, like the lost are, and the Christians, most of them, a majority of them, I should say, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan. Okay? The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And the spirit of Antichrist. Okay? Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace. Grace. Through faith. <laughs> Are ye saved? I know we've read a little bit more. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 5, 6. Ephesians 5, 6. Or 6, 5, excuse me. <laughs> Ephesians 6, uh, 6, 12. Excuse me. Ephesians 6, 12. Why did I write that down there? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Principalities. Principalities. Yeah. Princes have persecuted me without a cause. <laughs> but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. Verses 1 on 4. 2 Corinthians 4. Verses 1 on 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we, we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. What do you like with the four walls, ceiling, and floor? Not walking in craftiness, sod, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, like cherry picking or or taking things out of context, like, you know, like uh, the sinless perfectionist does, the antinomianist does, Catholic, the mother of all harlots, okay? But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, walking our talk, talking our walk, okay? We are ambassadors for Christ. How you serve the Lord reflects him. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air, Satan, hath blinded the minds which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Verse 5, For we preach not ourselves. Christianity is all about you, 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 I, 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 me, me, me. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake, servant. Christianity is all about serving themselves. All about serving themselves. Let's continue in Psalm uh, 119, Shin. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Oh, Psalm uh, 119, Mem, verse 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Psalm 119, A.N., verse 128. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Like I said in the one video about the sinless perfection, Scripture proved that uh, one guy, open air preacher, old fert, a liar. Scripture proves the free gracer a liar. I 
I love God. God is good. Okay? I love what is good. Therefore, I hate what is evil. Okay? That's perfect hatred. You love what God loves and you hate what he hates. God hates sin. I hate sin. But I do it all the time, unfortunately. Okay? I do. And so do you. Okay? But see... Sinless perfectionists are lying. Rome is a lie. Is nothing but a lie. It's Satan's church. The free gracers are liars. Sinless perfectionists are liars. Okay. Islam, they're liars. Okay. Buddhism, <laughs> it's all about self. They're liars. Okay. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Like I said. Scripture proves that sinless perfectionism, at least while you're in the flesh, is impossible. Okay? And your spirit and soul are in your flesh if you're alive right now. Okay? All right? Scripture has proved just believe and receive. A lie. Okay? It's a lie. It is a lie. Just believe and receive. Free grace. It's a lie. Okay? Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. They look at you strange as you run not to the same excess of, of riot as they do. How can you be so chill? Hey, Amen. It's like I get asked constantly now. It's like, what about Israel? What about... Well, dude, we know that's going to happen. These are the beginning of sorrows, okay? With the... I mean, it's, it's it's horrible that people are being killed and dying. That's horrible. That I, Of course, we, we mourn for that. But it's like, don't get worse, so worked up on it. Why? Because we're told that's going to happen. Okay? Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. I have finished my course. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Our salvation comes when we're dead. I mean, I'm saved. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I am saved. Okay? I, 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 I'm not, I don't have to worry about that. If I die, I'm going to be with the Lord. Okay? But our actual, you know, being with the Lord, okay, I'm saved. But dead, be with the Lord, or caught up, then it's like, okay, then it's officially over with because we're with the Lord. We're with Him. Okay? And Jesus Christ is our hope. My soul hath kept, kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies for all my ways. For thee. That is going to do it for this little video. Little video, yeah. You know... You can tell a lot about how a person walks. It can be faked, but only to an extent. If you're concerned with men, it's going to show. But if you're concerned with the Lord, it's going to show. And one uh, thing of Scripture, which I did not read, which I did not read, which will be the perfect icing on the cake for what we've been talking about here. Then we'll be done. In... 2 Timothy, or is it 1 Timothy? Is it 1 Timothy? Ah, 1 Timothy 5, verses 24 on to verse 25. Some men's sins are open beforehand. Sinless perfectionists. They're not saved. Come on. Some men's sins are open beforehand. Going before the judgment. And some men they follow after. In time you will see. That wait a minute. That's a facade. Likewise also the good works. Of some are manifest beforehand. You can see them. The fruit. And they that are otherwise. Cannot be. Thank you, brothers and sisters.
for your prayers. Please continue to pray for us. Things are getting weird. Uh, please keep the people in prayer that we mentioned at the beginning of this video. And uh, just uh, thank you. Thank you, brethren. Uh, hopefully this helps for whatever it's worth. And the uh, Lord be glorified. So, thank you, brethren. I love you. And we will see you in the next video. Okay? Bye-bye.